My name is Steve and I work at the Dublin Academy of Education uh, teaching physics, computer science and maths. And today we're going to do a little bit of maths, uh, particularly leaving search, we're going to look at calculus, ah, uh, differentiation and doing it by first principles. Okay, so uh, first off this usually throws students, they get really panicked about differentiation. What is it? What I'd say is first and foremost is get your head around comfortable doing differentiation, the technique which I'm going to show you now in a second. And I'm going to do an example of it done by first principles, but really once you learn that, you're just rinsing and repeating it. So let's take a look at some uh, existing questions. Now, the game I like to play with this in my head is, here's the question, I'm just going to say, and I'm going to write the answer. And your job is to see as I go, can you work out what this pattern is with the answers? So here's the question, y equals 4x cubed, and the answer is dy dx equals 12x squared. Over here, here's the question, y equals 3x squared minus 2x uh, to the power of 4. And I'm going to say dy dx equals 6x minus 8x cubed. Finally, I'll give one more. You might start to see the pattern now and take a moment. And I'm sure, I don't know the technology, you could pause it, maybe you can't, I don't understand. But try to see if you can work out the next one before I do it. But this one's going to be dy dx equals... 15x squared minus 10. So, first and foremost, what you've just done or what I've just done is differentiate. Right? It's the process of differentiation. What's happening each time? So here, we had 4x3. I did 3 multiplied by the 4 to give me 12. And I dropped the power by 1. Okay? Let's just see what here what happens. Here I have 2 by 3 which gave me 6. And I dropped the power by 1 which would be x to the power of 1, but we don't tend to write that, so I just said x. Here we do 4 by negative 2, which is negative 8, and drop the power by 1, 3. Over here, 3 by 5 is 15, drop the power by 1, x squared. And here, this is to the power of 1, which is again not written, because we don't tend to write it. 1 by 10 is minus 10, drop the power to 1, it would be x to the 0, anything to the power of 0 is just 1, so that also disappears. So, now, if you've never seen differentiation before, you're going to be saying, what is going on, Steve? And that's totally fair enough. Um, but hopefully you're seeing the pattern of what's happening. And you might have also noticed that I had this thing of dy dx, and what's that about? Okay, so that brings us to differentiating by first principles. Now, what I want you to understand is, differentiating by first principles is usually a question in the exam, if it, when, it, when it appears, not it doesn't always appear. Um, and it's a standalone question, the students answer it and they move on with their lives, okay? This skill here that I've done of differentiation is the one that you'll be using day in, day out. But to see where it came from is kind of pivotal. So, let's take a look. So, all the way back over here. What you need to get your head around first and foremost is, what is differentiation? And really, I'm going to summarise it up in one word. All differentiation is, is slope. So, when you see the word differentiate or differentiation or calculus, I want you to be thinking about slope, right? So I'll give two examples. If I had an x and a y axis here, and if I had a line, in order to find the slope of that line, what we do is we pick two points, we call this x, and we call this, uh, sorry, we call it x1, x2, sure, and y1, y2 which hopefully you've seen at junior cert at some point. x1, x2, y2, y1. And in order to find the slope of it, we would say, use our equation, which is in your formula booklet, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Now, another way of saying slope that you might also know or have heard or your teacher might have said is rise over run. Where I'm saying that this part here how much did I go up my rise and how much did I go across my run right so all slope is telling us is really how slanty something is how much your rise changed with your run so it's the change of rise with respect to run so slope is the change in rise with respect to run now and what I mean by that is if I take the same distance of a run, okay, and I have a greater rise with that run, then it's going to be steeper 
If I had less of a rise, it's going to be less steep. Okay? So change in rise with respect to one, or another way of saying that is change in y with respect to x, where rise is y and x is uh, run. So let's put this together. When do we use calculation for differentiation? Okay, so what, 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 what's, how is this different for slope now? What's going on? Is we're not talking about straight lines. When we're going to use differentiation is when we're talking about curves. So uh, when we're talking about curves, I want to find the slope of this curve. Okay? And you might say, well, Steve, the slope changes because at this point here, if I drew a tangent, that would be the slope. If I drew it here, it'd be slopey like that. If we do it here, it'd be slopey like that. The slope is constantly changing. So for that, we need to use uh, differentiation, which allows us to find the slope at a particular point. So very, very briefly, if I just take my uh, another curve here, I'll simplify it. I'm going to call this coordinate x, and this one is going to be a little further away at x plus h. Similarly, I'm going to call this, instead of calling this uh, y this time, I'm just going to call it f of x, because I'm calling this function f of x. So the coordinate here is f of x, and this coordinate would be f of x plus h. Okay? And the same rule is going to apply. We're going to just do slope between two points. And it's going to be y2 minus y1, so f of x plus h, that's my y2, minus my y1, over my x2 minus my x1. And what you'll notice is the x's cancel on the bottom, and we get this lovely little equation. Now what we're going to do to find the slope at a particular point is we're going to make this distance h super small, practically zero. So we're going to say let h be zero, and the way we do that is we say we take the limit of h as it tends towards zero. Hi, Karamba. Now, that big bad boy there, that is how we're going to differentiate by first principles. And like I said, you only have to do this in a particular question where you ask. So I'm going to take a look at the very first one there, and I'm going to solve it out with uh, first principles when I find my ruler. There it is. So, how would this work? Now, you'll notice I've used the notation here, dy, dx, and that's just another way of saying differentiate, which I'll show you two ways we can have it written. But here, I'm going to say, let's differentiate this. That's a shorthand. Differentiate 4x cubed by first principles. So, our job here is to look at the equation. And to do each part of it, fill it in, and then find the limit as h tends towards zero. So what I find easiest, and students usually struggle with less, is to do it in parts because it's quite, quite a bit, uh, bit together. So y equals 4x cubed. Now I'm going to use the notation f of x. And just to remind you, f of x and y are practically the same thing when we're talking about functions. So if f of x is this, I already have one part of my equation. I need to find f of x plus h. So all I'm going to do is replace the x value with x plus h. Now, I'm going to cheat this one, actually, if you don't mind, because I realize that this one's going to be very hard for you to solve. I'll just change this to a squared. OK? Otherwise, we'll be here till tomorrow living our best lives. So that'll be a nice squared one. And just to see how that would change here, this would be 8x should be my answer. Okay, so just changing that, but changing nothing else, I'm just going to multiply out this bracket here, 4 by x plus h by x plus h. Now take your time with the multiplication, expand your brackets accordingly, or whichever steps you like to do. But I get that f of x plus h is this long piece here. And now I'm actually nearly done, okay? I have my f of x plus h, I have my f of x, and h is just h. So I'm going to put it all together, and I'm going to just use this board over here again to do that. So putting it together, clearing this, let's take a look. So rewriting it out. Now, you unfortunately have to learn this for the exam. It's not in the formula booklet. Okay, so you need to have this guy learnt. You don't need to derive it or see where it came from. It's just nice to have an idea that it's only to do with slope. Replacing things. Limit as h tends towards zero. f of x 
plus h was this x squared plus 8xh plus h squared. So that whole bit was the bit that I took from that board over there. Minus f of x, I like to put a big square bracket. Minus f of x was the original equation for x squared. All over h. Now your job is to clean up the top. 4x squared and minus 4x squared are going to cancel. So I get 8xh plus h squared all over h. We're not going to do this limit business till the very end of the question. h goes into both of these to simplify to be 8x plus h. So 8xh divided by h, h squared divided by h. And now that I can't simplify it anymore, I'm going to now let h be 0. So I get my answer to be 8 which if we take a look in my just slightly adjusted question, the question was 4x squared, the answer was 8x. So what's that saying is, if I want to find the slope when x is 2, I just plug in x being 2. If I want to find the slope when x is 11, I replace x with 11, so on, so forth. Okay? That there is differentiating by first principles. Um, there's two ways you can write at the end. You can say dy dx, or you can use the notation f dash x. 8x, and you'll see both them referred to. They both mean the same thing, which is back to here, the change in y with respect to x, or the change in the y-axis with respect to x. All you're doing, though, fundamentally, is finding the slope. Okay, Back to it, find the slope. What I'll say to finish off, check you can do it, the simplified shortcut method, then find f of x, find f of x plus h, and plug it into your equation. You need to learn that equation. That's the unfortunate thing. But once you have it learned, you're golden. Okay, That's it for doing uh, differentiation by first principles. Best of luck with your leading search.